Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, um, dear organizers of this uh, wonderful NOAA conference, dear audience in Zurich and all over the world. Uh, it's my great pleasure and honor to be able to present to you the Microbiota Vault, which is a global nonprofit initiative to conserve long-term health for humanity by preserving microbial biodiversity. When you look in the mirror this morning, have you ever realized you're actually more microbe than human? There are about a hundred trillion bacteria, viruses, and fungi living within or on us humans, and that is 10 times the number of your own human cells. In terms of gene content, this actually means that there are about a hundred times more microbial genes currently estimated to be more than 3 million as compared to the 23,000 human genes. This clearly must have important implications in terms of how we as humans function together with this environmental gene pool, which we collectively call the holobiont. Indeed, what we know by now is that these microbes actually live in complete symbiosis with us and that the vast majority of them uh, are not only good for us, but essential for our health and well-being. Um, this graph here shows you the so-called microbiota services essentially reflecting all uh, the layers where microbials are essential in securing our health, including via ensuring immune balance, a healthy metabolism, and interacting on the nervous system via the so-called gut-brain axis. So if these microbes are so important to our health, we should ask ourselves, how are my invisible microbial friends actually doing? We are all aware that our ecosystems are threatened by climate change and human interference, and we just heard about uh, the bee extinction. However, we mostly talk about what I would call the visible extinction, which are all forms of life that are large enough for us to recognize and interact with. We all know that over the past decades, we have lost important animal species, including uh, rhinoceroses and others shown in this image above. At the same time, we tend to forget about the invisible extinction of the fungi, bacteria, and viruses that are too small for us to see by eye so that we don't knowingly interact with them and therefore tend to ignore them completely. Indeed, there's actually a growing body of evidence that our, our friends are threatened just as much as our visible ones are. If you look at this graph, you can see microbial diversity on the y-axis, while the x-axis shows different human populations in which microbial diversity was measured. The message is, if you move from a traditional population on the left side, for example, an indigenous population in Tanzania, towards a rural and then urban population, for example, in New York City, the microbial diversity drops by roughly 50%. In other words, Many microbial species go extinct when we humans transition from traditional into westernized environments. This loss of diversity can at least partially be explained by Western habits, including excessive hygiene, overuse of antibiotics, processed foods, and C-sections. Not to say that in the current pandemic, hygiene is of utmost importance. Um, because we're losing this genetic diversity, which we think is hugely important, uh, as part of our holobiont, a group of internationally renowned scientists, including two Nobel laureates, came together to propose a solution similar to the Svalbard Seed Vault that many of you may have heard of. Pioneered by Maria Gloria Dominguez Bello on the top left and Martin Blazer on the top right, the following vision arose. To forever secure the basis of the naturally evolved biodiversity of the microbiota, important to humankind to support health globally. Now, based on this vision, uh, the ultimate goal of the microbiota vault is to serve as a backup for microbial samples and at the same time enable a global ecosystem to drive research and innovation. Um, let me explain you how we plan to achieve this. Um, first of all, the microbiota vault closely interacts with local working collections and research efforts all over the world. Imagine, for example, a local working collection in Peru that would want to safeguard their samples from extreme weather and political instability, a real threat to research collections in many geographies. The Microbiota Vault then provides the Peruvian local working collection a safe backup option, while the ownership remains entirely at the local working collection. 
This is, of course, hugely important in terms of equitable access and benefit sharing. In return, the local working collection receives standardized genetic sequences of their samples, which they can choose to be published in the vault's open database. This in turn will allow anyone else in the world, be it academic, an entrepreneur or a company, to know that a sample of interest may be available in Peru. This means we not only enable the preservation of the microbial samples, but also allows us to set global standards and guidelines for microbial preservation, foster research and collaboration, and accelerate innovation to allow for future restoration of health. So where are we today? We already established theoretical feasibility, whereby an independent group performed interviews and came up with a potential path forward, a document that we published um, last year. We took the learnings from this feasibility study and built the launch phase on top, which is going on as we are speaking. The goal of this phase is to validate the overall legal and scientific framework by coordinating the storage of an initial set of about 2,000 samples. We anticipate that there will be at least two growth phases following. During the first one, we will be looking at repurposing an existing Swiss army bunker for the safe storage site and scale the collection into 10,000s of samples. We have actually been actively looking into different bunkers that may be suitable for this purpose and are confident we'll uh, find one. Now, for the launch phase, we'll be working with two to three local working collections that send their samples for fit. Multiple protocols of two preservation methods um, will be compared head to head. So cryopreserved samples will be stored at minus 196 degrees in liquid nitrogen, while lyophilized samples will be stored at fridge temperature in a dry powder format. At the same time, and as important, the digital pipeline for extracting sample sequence information and corresponding metadata will uh, be built with the goal to make the data openly available to the world. As I mentioned before, we anticipate that making the data available will actually foster research and innovation at local working collections and their future collaborators. Initially, the launch phase will include around 2,000 gut microbiota samples, meaning they come from stool, as well as around 200 microbial samples derived from fermented foods. Imagine, for example, from kombucha or kimchi, uh, thanks to a collaboration with the periodic table of food initiative launched by the foundation. However, it's clear that there are a whole variety of other microbial samples from, from other body parts, from animals, from soil and plants that may be equally important to the concept of One Health. It's clear that capturing those will be crucial when the initiative has the resources to do so. In the past 12 months, we've raised more than 1.5 million in philanthropic funding to get the initiative off the ground. This launch phase will be executed by an excellent Swiss core team, including Professor Egli from the University of Basel, a biobanking and sequencing expert, Professor Von Asch from the University of Lausanne with connections to valuable collections in the global south, and Professor Bokulic from ETH with core expertise in computational biology, and annotation relevant for the digital platform. So what we need from you is the following. Help us build the NOAA's Ark for microbes essential to human health, fittingly this conference, and join a series of other philanthropists, foundations, and institutions who have joined the cause. We are currently looking for another $2 million for the next two years, which will help us to uh, find dedicated uh, biobanking sites or a bunker, uh, get biobanking infrastructure, validate additional sample storage protocols, drive the fundraising for the growth phases and strengthen the secretariat. So as you have hopefully understood from my talk, the vault will be a key element to preserving the biodiversity of invisible microbes and at the same time accelerates research and innovation that may lay the foundation for future startups to pitch at NOAA. So while most of you are here to make investments into potentially profitable companies now, you could take your chance and place a philanthropic bet on a platform that could lead to the genesis of many future profitable ventures. Uh, thank you very much. And don't hesitate to drop me a line or any questions you may have. 
Have a wonderful rest of the conference with lots of inspirations and fruitful interactions.